Life's too short to drive boring cars. So if you're like me, you probably want a vehicle that's very, very reliable. But the question is, is that the first priority? For me, it's actually more important that I have a car that's extremely fun to drive and that it's not overly unreliable. I look at the balance. Obviously, it's not all about having the absolute most reliable vehicle on the market because then we'd all be driving Honda Accords and it would be a boring world now, wouldn't it? So I truly do believe you have to strike the balance between the actual enjoyment you get from a car and the level of reliability that you're going to see. I mean, obviously, Obviously you don't want something that's constantly in the shop because then it's no fun. But on the other hand, you want something that's going to be lively and interesting and stylish and fun to drive. So guess what? I'm going to share a list of five great vehicles that I find so fun to drive and so exciting that a little bit of reliability compromise is certainly worth every minute. Let's get into it now. So the first vehicle on my list that's guaranteed worth a drive and an ownership just because it's such a great machine, even though reliability maybe isn't its first forte, it's the Jaguar F-Type and specifically the R model. It was so great in fact that I personally bought one myself, but let's take a look. And here it is, it's the F-Type R. I love these cars, they're so great. I dare you to take one out for a drive, you will be convinced. Now Jaguar's never been accused of being the most reliable brand on the planet. However, they are getting better. They're a lot better than a lot of people give them credit for in recent years, since Ford and now Tata Motors owns the brand. You'll be pleasantly surprised that the reliability is no worse than a modern day BMW or Benz. Now what we're looking at here is the R which is the supercharged 5 liter V8 engine. These make about 550 horsepower and really is one of the seriously quickest cars on the street today. But they look great too, they're stunning. With all the vents down there, beautiful blade wheels with massive calipers and great accents. You'll notice fold away mirrors and these very strong and stout aggressive rocker panels find their way to the rear where you find a great sleek set of rear tail lights and of course you have quad exhaust tips because this is the V8. The V6 has a set of twins in the middle but again this is the all-wheel drive R. Some of the earlier generation cars actually had a rear wheel drive setup and then they found the cars were getting way too squirrely, they were too powerful and Jaguar figured they might as well make a car that's more plantable and functional for the masses. These are absolutely stunning. They've come featured with a 7-speed ZF automatic transmission which shifts almost as quick as a dual clutch transmission. Works great in auto and it's very intuitive. So what's the interior like? The interior has high quality seats and finishing that certainly does not disappoint. And while they're not perfect, let me talk about a few of the key issues that you'll find in an F-Type R. There's the odd case of coolant leaks, usually from the expansion tank. Fuel injectors in some cases are failures, but that's common for a lot of modern day direct injected engines. O2 sensors and the rear differentials are electronic and sometimes prone to failure, particularly if you're not maintaining the fluids. But the core 5 liter V8 engine is bulletproof. The superchargers rock solid other than the snorkel which sometimes starts to make noise. You just have to replace the front end and you're good to go. And the gearbox is absolutely flawless. These cars are actually quite Quite reliable other than the odd squeak rattle plastic trim piece and sticky button syndrome these cars are guaranteed to impress and the odd nickel and dime issue isn't anywhere near to let you down and the second one on my list well worth a few of the little troubles that you'll find is the Audi TT RS that features the 400 horsepower turbocharged five-cylinder engine and it gets coupled up to a DCT transmission absolutely wonderful cars ferociously fast and yes you can drive them in the snowy wintry conditions these cars are magnificent there we go, we have the TTRS with these great little LED tail lights. You'll notice it has a little wing to show that this car is a little extra sportier. Beautiful wheels, wonderful tail finish on here. You'll notice you've got this great little splitter down there finished in high gloss black and these great little tailpipes, massive by size and there's two of them. And then you look down the side, absolutely beautiful car. Look at the rocker flares out nicely and these wonderful fold-in mirrors with the LED strip circle around to the front you've got these wonderful LED headlights that Audi is putting out today and it's the Quattro but it's the Holdex all-wheel drive system more based on what you're finding in Lamborghini beautiful high gloss finishing there and you've got this great grill finish hot little car looks great goes like it's on rails and once you put your foot into this you swear you're driving a Lamborghini truly one of the most exciting cars from the Audi brand next to the R8. They even call this the miniature R8. So what are the, some of the problems with these vehicles? Steering rack gets a little clunky, window regulators have their um, common issues, and the interior looks top shelf, 
but unfortunately the seats do get a little saggy. But these cars do come with the latest MMI system and the DCT gearbox. So from my perspective, the TTRS is guaranteed one to have. Fairly reliable, but ultra fun. And the next one on my list is this beautiful little yellow machine parked behind me here. Now there's not a lot of BMWs I'm going to sign off on. And the M3 and M4 cars have traditionally been borderline in terms of reliability. And I'll talk about a few of the problems, but let's take a quick look. Here we have the BMW M4, which is essentially the outgoing model. This has the S55 engine. Of course, this has been replaced by an all new generation. It's this last model that actually, in my opinion, is one of the nicest M3 or M4 models that they've ever produced. Let's take a look. Right there is your M4 and they've got that tight little grill on the front end of this. And we look down here and you'll notice it has a very aggressive front spoiler on there. Of course you've got the great LED headlights. It is a BMW and this is a late model car. Beautiful rims, massive calipers. And of course here we have the M4 logo with a little grill insert. And look at these wonderful mirrors. A little bit different from the rest of the model lineup. Little markers. This one's keyless entry for sure. And what's ultra nice is this particular car is outfitted with the carbon fiber roof as option. And we cycle around to the back. This also has a carbon fiber rear tail on it. And because this is the two door coupe, this is the M4 versus the M3 being the four door version. Gotta love these rear tail light finishings on the wonderful M4. And how about the rear bumper? Gotta like those extra vents. Looks very, very sporty and aggressive. And you have the quad tailpipe. What's the inside of this car like? In typical BMW format, high quality, well finished, and it's got nearly the latest, greatest version of the iDrive or M Drive system. Notice how the mirror doesn't actually connect at the top? These M4s are great, they're stout and they're aggressive and they're fast and even better if you get the Competition or the GTS models. But even the base generation M4 is huge value, huge bang for the buck and extremely fun to drive. Now you can get the DCT transmission equipped in these or the six speed manual gearbox with the third pedal. So what are some of the issues? Typical oil filter housing leaks. There's a gasket in there between the filter housing and the engine, they leak as well as the cooler. You can get coolant and oil leaks or mixing all together, valve cover gasket leaks, pan gasket leaks, and the infamous crank hub issue which does come apart more importantly in low percentage volume numbers and even more so with the DCT equipped vehicles because the hard shock upon shifting seems to jar that loose. But again it's low numbers of cars that have that issue and generally speaking this car is so much fun, looks great, sounds great and now with BMW having gone to the beaver teeth version of the new M4 these ones might be worth even more. Check it out the BMW BMW M4 is definitely a keeper. And the next one on my list is one of those for all you SUV folks out there and it's the Porsche Macan. Now I've driven a lot of different SUVs, sporty, off-road vehicles. These are not meant for hard bombing the mud bogs. These are in fact an SUV that can get you through the bad driving conditions, i.e. the snow and the mud and the slush, but it can have a lot of fun in doing that. These are nothing short of a Porsche 911 strapped to an SUV body. Now you get the Macan right there, which features a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. And over here you have the Macan M which has 375 horsepower it's 2.9 liter v6 and it's also turbocharged absolutely beautiful I wouldn't I would skip personally right to the Macan s or go turbo or GTS these are great cars nonetheless stick with the v6 turbocharged vehicles and you can't go wrong they're a lot of fun are there problems well, there are some issues. People have commented about the gearboxes failing because they're double clutch transmission in these versus the torque converter style in the Cayenne. These actually shift super fast. They handle like they're on rails and pull quickly, as well as the power combined with the V6 turbocharged engines make these things absolutely amazing. But let's take a look. Gotta love these vehicles. For an SUV, there's very else like this. It's sporty, it's compact, it's got room for you and the kids and even the dog, and it's good to go for a long haul. And they're quite robust. Right there, beautiful wheels by Porsche. And you'll notice it's sort of a clamshell type lid. As you can see, it sort of wraps around on the hood. Great little mirrors on there, Porsche style with the LED. And you see that little accent on there. Beautiful little rocker finishing and a nice touch here with the high gloss black handles. Some real attention to detail with these vehicles for sure. And of course it's hard to tell but these headlights follow the generational 718 Boxster and Cayman designs. Of course the front here is very bold and you've got these great grills in the front which look strong. Take another look at the mirrors. Look at that Y fitting right there. It's beautiful. And I personally love the interior of these. It makes you feel like you're on an aircraft and you're the pilot of this hot new ride. 
and we circle around of course you've got the great rake here on the back typical like every sporty SUVs today but these are even more aggressive than most and you can see it's the Macan S and it's by Porsche and you'll notice this is the latest and greatest version because we'll see we've got the light strip across the back the older versions don't have that thin stripe across there and of course beautiful tail light assembly how about at the bottom we got two pipes and two pipes there again and a wonderful little splitter just connecting the dots I also notice you've got some glass on top to let an illumination in the cabin for all the little passengers riding on board you really can't go wrong with the Macan in general whether you want the base model or you want the S or GTS or turbo they're all great vehicles it just depends how much excitement you want when you put your foot into it either way once you drive some miles you'll realize how well these are bolted together because they don't start to get loose and they don't start to get rattly like a lot of other SUVs they stay tight they stay planted together and yes there may be some electrical gremlins and the occasional gearbox failure which isn't cheap but it's such a magnificent ride it's probably one of my favorite SUVs on the market today the Porsche Macan and last but certainly not least, one of my favorites, and it's a toss-up between the Porsche 911 and the F-Type as being my top of this particular list. And what we're looking at here is a Porsche 911. This is a generation 997. Features a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter flat six engine. Either get the Tiptronic, which isn't the greatest, or you get the manual six-speed gearbox in this magnificent Porsche generation. You'll notice the 997 has the round bug eyed headlights again. The front bumper looks very similar to the following predecessor, which is the 991. Here, of course, you'll see slightly st smaller style of wheel, conventional handles, and the key being its rear engine with a mid-mounted transaxle gearbox. This one's being a convertible, but there's a lot of great 911s. Like here we have a 996 generation. This is the first generation of liquid cooling. Not a lot of people loved it. It's hard to tell under the snow, but it has the kidney style headlights. That's the big key differentiation. The first generation of this had a 3.4 liter flat six and it was liquid cooled for a change. And then it turned into a 3.6 liter shortly after a couple of years, but you'll notice it also has has a slab sides to it not quite as flared not quite as pretty this is the first generation enthusiasts weren't loving it but it ushered in the major change to the next generation and here's another one this is a newer generation this comes after the 997 this is called the 991 generation and it's a 911 GTS as you see right there there's your GTS you've got center lock wheels PDK transmission and well sculpted seats of course, it's Cabriolet, so it's not a particularly inexpensive model, but it is certainly sought after. The 911 GTS 991 generation. And we have the latest and greatest Porsche 911. It is this one here, and it's called the 992 generation 911. Conventionally, the Carrera Carrera S that would typically be naturally aspirated is now turbocharged with a three liter flat six twin turbos. This is certainly the latest and the greatest. I love the looks of this new car. Looks awesome. Look at the front spoiler on that. Absolutely looks hot. How about the little markers? Very low profile, very clean. Love these headlights. Still a bug eye, slightly different design. And if you look down, you'll see massive amount of flare. Look at the, the front flares and then leading to the massive back flares there. Beautiful wheels, massive red calipers. That shows that they're the steel discs, but you get the yellow calipers, means PCCB, which would be your carbon composite brakes. Great mirrors and 21 inch wheels here on the back, massive. The interior is typical high quality Porsche, and this one happens to be the PDK, which is Porsche's dual clutch transmission. Circle around, beautiful accents there, and love the light assembly there. You'll notice the rear finish is a little different on this current generation 911. You've also got great vents down there. And we have the Carrera 4S, meaning it's all-wheel drive, and it's the S model. Extra upgrades with the S. And we, of course, we've got these beautiful integrated tailpipes. Look on in there. Absolutely beautiful finish. Look at the flare on that unit. The Porsche 911, it's always been a class favorite. It's always been very near and dear to my heart because these cars have superb handling, ferocious acceleration, and some of the best soundtracks you'll find anywhere in the business. They're also built like a tank, and there are idiosyncrasies along the way. Depending on the generation, there are different issues. For example, the 996 and the early 997 generations, you had the intermediate shaft problems. Also, the 997, you had the big bore, and sometimes washing and cylinder scoring. But generally, as a rule, most of these cars failures are happening at a fairly low volume and the cars in general are very well put together the Porsche 911 seriously one of the best and with all of that said be sure to click right there if you want to know five vehicles that won't make it to 60,000 miles because you don't want to waste your money 
Hope to see you next time. Catch you real soon. Bye-bye.